A blessed day to all of you, brothers and sisters, and to those who join us in worship through this live stream at the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus the Divine Word in Christ the King Mission Seminary, Quezon City. Today is the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our Mass Presider is Rev. Father Ronnie Crisostomo S. Vidi, Rector of the Shrine. Our Eucharistic celebration will now begin. Please rise. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Sit at my table Where saints and sinners are friends I wait to welcome the lost And lonely to share the cup of my love Come to the feast of heaven and earth Come to the table of plenty God will provide for all that we need Here at the table of plenty In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, dear friends, to our Eucharistic celebration on this 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The Lord calls us to uh, develop and continue to grow in our trust in Him in the midst of the difficulties and trials of everyday life. And he comes to us with his word to assure us with the sacrament of the Eucharist communion to sustain us. Today also we pray, we remember all fathers and pray for them. Pray that they may uh, fulfill their uh, mission as Fathers, we pray especially those who are in difficult situations, those who are sick, those who are away from their homes. And so to prepare to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, let us pause for a moment and ask God's mercy and pardon. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. We 
praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen, amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere your love and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Who shut within doors the sea, when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling bands? When I set limits for it, and fastened the bar of its door, and said, Thus far shall you come, but no farther. And here shall your proud waves be still. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sailed the sea in ships, trading on the deep waters. They saw the works of the Lord and His wonders in the abyss. His command raise up a storm wind, which tossed its waves on high. They mounted up to heaven, they sank to the depths, their hearts melted away in their plight. They cried to the Lord in their distress. From their straits, He rescued them. He hushed the storm to a gentle breeze, and the billows of the sea were still.
they rejoiced that they were calmed, and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his kindness and his wondrous deeds to the children of men. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all. Therefore, all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise to honor the Holy Gospel. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One day as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross over to the farther shore. Leaving the crowd, they took him away in the boat in which he was sitting, while the other boats accompanied him. It happened that a bad squall blew up. The waves were breaking over the boat and began to ship water badly. Jesus was in the stern through it all, sound asleep on a cushion. They finally woke him and said to him, Teacher, does it matter to you that we are going drown? He awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind fell off and everything grew, grew calm. Then he said to them, Why are you so terrified? Why are you lacking in faith? A great awe overcame them at this. They kept saying to one another, who can this be that the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A blessed Sunday to everyone and also those who are joining us through this live streaming other parts of the world. I love the sea. I love to watch and contemplate the sea. But I have a terror for the sea, especially traveling by sea, because first and foremost, I do not know how to swim. And secondly, because 
I suffer a lot of seasickness. I remember the first time I had my boat ride from Batangas to Mindoro for our summer camp as a seminarian. I felt so dizzy not for the next three days as if that I was floating. No. I dread traveling by sea now. And uh, the image of the sea is famous in the Bible. And uh, it is usually connected with the powers of the evil one. Probably because of the unpredictability and uh, the violence that it can uh, produce with the wind and storm that uh, the sea is often uh, seen in the Old Testament as a symbol of chaos and the habitation, the home of the evil powers as we find, for example, in the book of Job or in the uh, book of Psalms, this idea that the sea is the dwelling of evil powers. We find Jesus in today's gospel rebuking the raging sea. It's interesting to note that Jesus does not pray to God to calm the storm, but commands the storm himself with uh, sovereign authority. Be quiet, he said. Be still. Scholars of the Bible point out that uh, the word rebuke used by Jesus is the same word he used to cast out the unclean spirits. For example, in the earlier chapter of Matthew, uh, chapter 1 and chapter 3, most probably because he saw that the demonic powers somehow instigated this squall that threatened their journey with his disciples and their mission. So Jesus, we find here Jesus exorcising, subduing these adverse forces of nature with the same authority with which he freed human beings from the demonic oppression Immediately, the howling wind subsides and the raging waters became calm. The evangelist Mark wants us to realize here that Jesus has the power over creation and the forces of nature. And his power and, author and the authority of Jesus can be paralleled to that power of God during creation who with his powerful word commanded chaos and there was order and there was light and there was life. In other words, Mark, Saint Mark wanted to his listeners, that this ordinary, seem, seemingly ordinary person with them is a divine being. It is God. It is God. Why are you terrified? Why are, did you not, did you have, did, don't you have faith? Jesus chides his uh, disciples for their weak faith. Yes, Indeed, they turned to Jesus in their moment of uh, terror and fear, but they haven't grasped yet 
who He really is, the sovereign Lord over all creation. Jesus was forming this group of followers who were to be confident in their mission on earth to bring peace and authority of the kingdom in all troubles of humanity. Like in Exodus, God called his people beyond the sea and did not allow them to perish by subduing the raging waters. God's people and also the disciples knew very well that God alone has the power to subdue the seas. As in uh, the psalm would say, you rule the raging waters, the sea, you steal its swelling waves. No. Indeed, from Exodus on, God's control of the, of the sea has signified the tender care of God for His people. So it is no wonder that after Jesus comes, the storm, they were filled with awe. Their terror of the forces of nature was replaced by a reverent fear of God. Reverent fear of God's presence in Jesus. Jesus subduing the sea is a manifestation of his divine authority. Commentaries of this gospel passage point out that uh, this experience of the disciples reflects the experience of the early church. The boat bearing the disciples and the sleeping Jesus is an image of the church. The small and struggling early church, storm-tossed on the seas of the vast Roman Empire, must have wondered at times why the Lord seemed to be asleep in the stern, absent, uh, unaware or unconcerned about the dangers that threatened them in times of persecution. How often the disciples through all ages felt why in the midst of the storms of persecution, of natural disasters, personal troubles abound. In fact, here in the midst of pandemic, how many pose the question? have asked me, kailan ba magtatapos ito, Father? Akala ko. No? With all the difficulties that people are experiencing, kailan kaya matatapos ito? But Jesus' authority is without limit. And though He allows trials in the end, nothing can truly harm those who trust in Him. His reproach to His disciples is an invitation for all Christians to awaken their faith in the presence and in this absolute authority over all creation. The true antidote to fear of earthly dangers is the faith that comes from the fear of the Lord, that reverent awe of God that scriptures calls the beginning of wisdom. He who fears the Lord is never alarmed, never afraid, says the book of Sirach. Indeed, the most repeated command in the Bible, do not fear. Why? Because to refuse to give in to fear disables the followers 
from their disable the enemy's strategy which is to dissuade and discourage Jesus' followers from their mission. When we have no fear, as the, uh, the enemy trembles in fear. Dear friends, we may not be in control of our future, of the events of our life, but the Lord is reminding us today that He is in control even over the forces of creation. He can also, He is also in control of our destiny. The question therefore, the challenge is to place our trust in Him, to call on Him. And in this, may we also come to discover who He is in our life, that He is truly our Lord, our Savior, that makes us confident and unafraid in facing the realities of life. As we come again to hear His Word, to share His banquet, these are concrete proofs that He is indeed with us, that He is indeed sustain, sustaining us in our struggle. We may not prevent the terrors and uh, difficulties of life, but we know that those who trust in the Lord have the hand, the word, consoling word, and the saving hand of our Lord. Let us then put our trust in Him who loves us, who has saved us, and who wants what is best for us. Amen. Please rise. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to God, our Father, that with His power we may weather the storms of life. Let our response be, Lord, save your people. Lord, save your people. For the church, the boat of Peter, that it may not lose heart when the storms of persecution and dissension threaten to sink it. We pray, Lord, Lord save, save your people. For our government and civil leaders, that they may spare no effort to bring peace to places where rebellion and armed conflict are destroying lives and homes. 
we pray. Lord, Lord save, save your people. That political and civil leaders may desist from, uh, from going after instant popularity and political windfalls, but pursue what is truly beneficial for the people, we pray. Lord, Lord save, save your, your people. people. For families beset by continual fighting and for homes threatened by the surging waves of unemployment and poverty, that they may find in Jesus the will to weather these storms, we pray. Lord, Lord save, save your, your people. For our beloved departed, that the Lord may lead them safely home to heaven and fulfill their faith and hope, we pray. Lord, Lord save, save your people. In silence, we pray for our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, save your people. In a special way, we pray for all fathers, our own fathers. We remember them. And through the intercession of St. Joseph, may they be given the grace they need to fulfill their mission. We pray to the Lord. Lord, save your people. Father, amid the various storms of life, let us again hear the voice of your Son. Quiet, be still. May we find peace in our hearts and in one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please rise. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice, our hearts, our prayers, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of our conciliation and praise, and grant that cleanse by its action we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord Amen
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. that rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Onesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us express our gratitude and our trust in Him who loves us, the Father, with the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, especially this pandemic. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit let us offer each other the sign of peace peace be with you jesus lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy of the world have mercy on us Jesus Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world grant us peace Behold Jesus Christ, who is in control over creation and over the troubles and trials of our life, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should that you enter under, under my roof, but, but only, only say, say the, the word, word and, and my soul Jesus. shall be healed. the body of Christ. Amen. Please be seated for a while. Reminder, Holy Communion will be done by Rose. 
Kindly wait for the ushers to guide you accordingly. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
please rise. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please kneel for the Oratio Imperata. All together, merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our faith, and strengthen our hope. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country and the whole world. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Saints Arnold Janssen and Joseph Reinademetz, pray for us. Please be seated for a short announcement. We are inviting couples who would like to renew their marriage vows to join and participate the Shrine's Third Renewal of Marriage Vows or Renewal ng Bayan on June 27, 2021, Sunday at 8 o'clock in the morning. Those interested may register at bit.ly slash Shrine Renewal ng Bayan or send us a message through the Shrine's Facebook page. Thank you from Reverend Father Ronnie Crisostomo SVD, Shrine Rector. Please rise. Before the final blessing, once again, our greetings to our fathers, those who are here. Palakpakan natin sila. And our wish to all of you now the good health and uh, may you find joy in your being fathers salamat din sa magpagbati ninyo sa aming mga pari nagulat ako binabati kami ng happy fathers day nung, uh, so thank you also for as one said you are also our fathers in spiritual life so uh, thank you for your greetings too. This uh, blessing we pray specially for all fathers. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God Almighty bless you, your loved ones, your families, your work and activities. 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.